a person's strengths are often their biggest weaknesses. And so that also means that their weaknesses can be their strengths. I am weak, but I don't accept that. I don't accept that I am what I am and that that is what I'm doomed to be. I'm always fighting, I'm struggling, and I'm scrapping, and I'm kicking and clawing at those weaknesses to change them, to stop them. There are times in life when conflicts and trouble arise. How we deal with these conflicts and how we deal with these troubles reveals more about our character than we want to admit. Because what you are when the pressure is on is what you really are. Let me tell you some of the stuff you've been through. Don't pay it any attention. It is just a sign that the baby is coming. You're on the verge of birthing. You're about to give birth. I don't care whether you're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. There's something down inside of you that's still kicking inside of you that wants to get out and it wants to live. Some days I win. Some days I don't. But each and every day, I get back up and I move forward with my fist clenched toward the struggle. And I fight with everything I've got to overcome those weaknesses and those shortfalls and those flaws. As I strive to be just a little bit better today than I was yesterday. As long as there's people, there's going to be conflict disagreements, contention, dissension. Family reunions would be really nice if you didn't have to deal with your family. But everywhere there's people, there's going to be strife. There's going to be conflict. There's going to be trouble because that's just the way it is. Sometimes you can try so hard at something. Sometimes you can be so, so prepared, still fail. And with every time you fail, it's painful. I've often said a man's character is not judged after he celebrates a victory, by, but, but by what he does when his back is against the wall. You've got to be knocked down and then be willing to continue. You're going to be laughed at. And you're going to be ridiculed. You're going to face self-doubt. You're going to be exhausted at times. You're going to face all sorts of challenges if you want to get to your Mount Everest. Everything that happens to you is for your growth. It's the times of suffering that make you great. So no matter how great the setback, how severe the failure, you never give up. Get up, change your position. And listen, if you can't stand up, look up. Just change your position. Start writing as though you're already up. Start planning as though you're already up. Start acting as though you're already up. Get up in your believing. Get up in your hopes. Get up in your aspirations. It's necessary you take responsibility for it, that you make it happen, that you don't give up, that you keep on keeping on, that you don't decide that I can't make it because you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, that you realize that's a part of the program. And here's something you've got to resolve. Say this to yourself every day. See, as long as you're breathing, you've got to shout at your dream. That's the way I resolve. Say this, please. It's not over until I win. Got that right. Start doing everything that you can, because remember, the areas of your focus are the areas of your reward, and the areas of your neglect are the areas of your pain. 
when change is involved, somehow we we get into this thing where we're kind of waiting for somebody else to do it. We're we're waiting on someone else to arrive. I mean, we've got to we've got to stop that. We got to stop waiting for someone to change before you change. You got to stop waiting for somebody to to help you change. You, you've got to weigh before you pay. Whether you're going to spend heavy time or light time, you've just got to weigh. Otherwise, if you're not careful, you can get trapped into spending heavyweight time with lightweight people. Now, it's okay to have casual friends as long as you give them casual time, not serious time. Spend major time with major influence and minor time with minor influence. So, maybe all you need to do to change some of the influences in your life is not to eliminate them, but merely limit them. Take a look at your priorities and your values. We have so little time at our disposal. Wouldn't it make sense to invest it wisely? If you can teach people to stand up in the face of the things they're afraid of, they get stronger. And you don't know what the upper limits to that are, because you might ask yourself, like, if for 10 years, if you didn't avoid doing what you knew you needed to do, what would you be like? Our obsessions become our possessions. If you really began to think about what you think about on a regular basis, most of you are thinking about what you're worried about, and what you're concerned or anxious about, and you don't take control of your thoughts. I'm a decent example of making that shift. And what I do when I know I'm having ones that don't serve me, I go, I'm intentional about it. When you're intentional about something, it loses its power over you. If you live your life in despair, that's what happens to you. I'll never be rich, you won't. If you say all men are dogs, you're gonna meet every last one of them. As you think, so you become. And once you know that what you think about is what expands, you start getting real careful about what you think about. The moment you change the frequency, different things come back to you. I'm telling you this how it works. You have a series of emotions you live with regularly, don't you? Those emotions could be bliss, passion, joy, faith, but they could also be worry, stress, depression, frustration, concern. And because you've done it over and over again, even though you know they don't serve you, you will find a way on a very regular basis to get those damn emotions. The quality of your emotions is going to be the quality of your life. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, we are unspiritual, when we're under the control of ordinary impulses. And that's the way so many people are today. They just let their feelings run their lives. If they feel like telling somebody off, they just tell them off. They feel like being depressed, and they go around all depressed. But friends, we cannot just act on these emotional impulses and expect to have any kind of victory in our lives. Feelings can get us into trouble. And throughout life, you're going to have plenty of opportunities to lose your temper. And you're going to get up some mornings and feel like being depressed. At times you'll get caught in traffic and feel like being impatient, feel like getting upset. But we've got to learn how to follow wisdom and do what we know is right and not just follow our feelings around. I can feel my emotions rising, but I made a decision not to get on board. Just because you can feel those emotions doesn't mean you have to get on board. When you feel like saying something that you know you shouldn't say, no, don't get on board. Things aren't going your way and you kind of feel like being discouraged. No, you've got to learn to discipline the negative feelings and keep a good attitude anyway. It's when we do the hard things in life, that's when God is developing our character. Somebody offends us and we just... Don't let it bother us. We just take the high road. That's when we're really maturing. But the problem today is too many people are not willing to pay the price to walk in victory. They don't want to be inconvenienced. They just want to take the easy way out. The easiest thing to do is to just let our flesh have its way. If you want to grow up and experience God's best, it's going to take some hard work. It's hard to keep a good attitude and be patient when nothing's going your way. Sometimes it's going to make us uncomfortable. But I read where there are two kinds of pain in life. One is the pain of discipline. The other is the pain of regret. And if we live a lazy, undisciplined life, and we act on these emotional impulses, we're going to make very poor choices that we regret later on. 
I mean, how many times have we acted on our emotions and said something that we know we shouldn't say? And later on, it ends up hurting us in that relationship. Friends, the pain of discipline is minuscule compared to the pain of regret. No discipline at the time is pleasant, but later on, it's going to bring you a harvest of great things. If you live on that shallow level, just always letting your flesh have its way, and I can tell you later on, you're going to have some major regrets. If you allow yourself to just go around being upset, and impatient, and stressed out, later on it's going to catch up to you. Later on it's going to affect your health. If you just are loose in your morals, and you just do whatever you feel like doing, well, it may give you some pleasure at the time, but later on it's going to cost you a very heavy price. See, God will only promote us as high as our character will take us. God is not going to put you in a position of greater leadership if you are not treating the people in your life right now with respect and honor. If you're being lazy and not being faithful to do what you know you should be doing, then that's going to keep you stagnant. That's going to keep you from growing. If you had a problem with your temper 10 years ago and you have that same exact problem today, I can tell you that's keeping you from God's best. If you would just do your part and grow up a little bit and quit being ruled by your feelings, if you do that, that's when God will begin to increase you. If you're having difficult times today, instead of getting all bent out of shape, you need to see it as an opportunity to grow. God may be trying to do a work in you. If you find yourself always being around people that offend you and you're always getting your feelings hurt, well, there's a good chance that God is trying to teach you to quit being so touchy. If you find yourself around people that are always rubbing you the wrong way, always irritating you, God is trying to teach you how to love the unlovely. He's trying to teach you a little bit about patience. Well, God, if you just ever change these kids, that's why I'm always upset. Now, let me tell you a secret. God is not going to change your children until you first allow Him to change yourself. And instead, look inside and allow God to do a work in you, then God will change the circumstances. Then He'll change those other people. As long as we're not passing the test, then we're going to have to take it over and over again. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, don't be surprised at the fiery trial that you're going through. It is only to test your quality. You see, when we go through times of pressure, it shows us what we're really made of. It shows us areas we need to improve. And unless we learn how to rule over our emotions, make the right choices, keep a good attitude, then we're not going to get out of that situation. God loves you too much to just leave you alone. He sees your potential. He is going to constantly be pushing you, testing you, and giving you opportunities to improve. The next time somebody does you wrong, you're tempted to get upset and lose your cool, no, you grow. If you'll keep a good attitude and do the right thing, you know what? You will pass the test and God will promote you. Don't get on board with your feelings. See, we cannot control every circumstance in life, but we can control how we respond to those circumstances. When you feel your emotions rising up, instead of just praying, God, get me out of this situation, God, change everything, no, you need to learn to pray, God, help me to remain calm. Help me to rule over these emotions. God wants us to be stable. He wants us to remain consistent. And the way we do it is to learn to live beyond our feelings. we got to discipline these negative emotions. You do not have to get all upset just because things don't go your way. Make your flesh stay calm. Pass that test. Just walk away. Be the bigger person. Don't allow other people to steal your joy. Keep yourself calm. It's a decision that you have to make. God is not going to make it for you. You've got to discipline yourself. The next time you're tempted to just follow your feelings, you remember God has promised that it is not too difficult for you to handle. You can overcome. You can withstand. That's what I want you to see today. Just when you have the emotion, you do not have to get on board. When we act on these emotional impulses, it causes us to make poor choices that we're going to regret later on. All of you this year wrote down a bunch of things you want to achieve. 
You and I have gotten pretty good at achieving things we put our mind to, haven't we? Including the negative things. You're damn good at getting that stress emotion, aren't you? Now, since you're so good at getting what you want, what if you set an outcome to begin to achieve certain emotions on a regular basis? Because what you've done is you've deluded yourself into thinking, if I can get five million in the bank, I can get that hot so-and-so girl, then I'll have those emotions I want. That ain't how it works. I was worth 30, 40, 50 million dollars. Still really not very happy person. Married the girl of my dreams. Built my first mansion, built another mansion. Still not very happy because I didn't get outcomes for emotions, I got outcomes for stuff. But if you start to become more intentional about, I'm gonna find some peace every day. I'm gonna find some solitude every day. People are like, what happened to you? I went from 50 million to probably a half a billion dollars in five or eight years. The difference was I started to get the quality of life I wanted, the quality of emotions I wanted. And you gotta get those brothers. Cause you're not getting out of here alive. You ain't getting out of here alive. Why don't you start to be a little happier? A little bit more giving, man. You'd be so happy you did. The fact is the strongest men are the ones who are willing to be the most vulnerable, are the ones who are willing to give joy, give peace to people. Those are the strongest men in the world, right?